Welcome. My name is Matt Ward, and I'm a professional speaker and a word of mouth referral consultant. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Care Package, how to get more word of mouth referrals in your business and specifically your dealership. Now, I come from many years of owning a digital marketing agency. In the last four years, I owned that agency before I sold it in 2018. Every single new client I got was from referrals. So I'm gonna unpack for you today a series of methodologies and strategies that I wrote about in my book that we can cover so that you can get more referrals in your dealership as you move past the pandemic stage and try to grow and try to build relationships that matter so much more. Now, I wanna start out letting you know that normally, in a non-pandemic environment, I'm on stage everywhere. In fact, this is my keynote speaker strikes a pose video, right? My photo here is most certainly Photoshopped. That I can guarantee you. This one though, is not. That is Zapper Matt Ward. That is me in 1991 at my high school prom in good old Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's right. I grew up in Chocolate Town, USA, hence my wall art here that I continuously remind myself about. You know, there's some really great things about Hershey, Pennsylvania that you may be familiar with if you've ever been there. Two really, really cool things. The first one is that the streetlights are wrapped and unwrapped Hershey Kisses. The second one is that's right, it smells just like chocolate. Now, sitting in your chair, just lean back, take a deep breath with me. Smell that? No, it smells like bacon from the kitchen. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, I spent uh, quite a few uh, years of my early childhood, my formative years in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I mean, after all, how do you think I got this big? I gained a pound every day just breathing there. And the thing about Hershey's is that they're an iconic brand, right? And, and they're pervasive throughout the United States and to the point where everybody recognizes their logo. And the one question that I've always pondered is how can small businesses, how can dealerships like yourself have an iconic brand? How can we be different? How can we stand out from the noise? and get people to choose us over the competition, to look for their trailers and cargo trailers and utility trailers from us? How can we get them to look at us first before the competition? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how some other people have done just that. This is John Cronin. John is the founder of johnscrazysocks.com. He and his dad, Mark, founded John's Crazy Socks Dot com so that they could create a company together and work together day in and day out. And when you buy your socks from johnscrazysocks.com, you can choose from all types of different socks. You can even get your Tom Brady socks, you know, goat socks. And I recognize that those are blue and white socks, but living in the Boston area and splitting time between Boston and Florida, I have to pick Am I gonna get Tom Brady blue and white socks or am I gonna get Tom Brady red and gray socks? I choose the blue and white. So when I order my Tom Brady socks from johnscrazysocks.com, I don't just get those socks, but I also get candy. And I also get a handwritten note from John himself. And if I'm lucky enough to live on Long Island, or you're lucky enough to live on Long Island, when you order your socks from johnscrazysocks.com, you might just be fortunate enough to meet John in person when he hand delivers your socks to your door. Now, if you're like me and you split time between Boston and sunny Southwest Florida, then when you order your crazy socks from johnscrazysocks.com, you don't get to meet John, you get to meet this guy. The Amazon delivery guy. That's right. Many of us have a relationship with him since the pandemic started, and it's not one we want to rave about. 
But the bottom line is John Cronin says his mission is to spread happiness through socks. And aren't crazy socks just so much fun? Don't they just make you smile? I mean, look here. John's dad, Mark, has got his luau socks on and he's got his Hawaiian lei with their Hawaiian shirts on and they just make you smile. You see, crazy socks tell a story. They tell others what our hobbies are. And sometimes they even tell other people what we're actually thinking. You see, sometimes we communicate through our crazy socks. But the question I have for you today is what if your mission, similar to John's, was to spread happiness? How would you feel? And more importantly, how would you make others feel? You see, somewhere along the way, I think that sales and relationships took a turn for the worse. You see, they, they got away from this, and they ended up more being like this. And you see, we despise that. We despise having to go to the car dealership where we feel like someone is going to prey on us. And then when we sign the deal and we get ready to leave, they're going to ask us for three referrals. No one wants to be sold to. As humans, we hate it. We despise it. We don't like cold calls coming in. But we do love to buy. We'd like to buy on our own terms. And I feel like we need to hit the reset button and just kind of start this whole thing all over again. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know all the stories that your business originates from, the family lineage, that your dealership, uh, how it was started, when it was started. But I'll tell you just for a brief minute that for me, I was an accidental business owner. You see, I was a youth football coach in a town called Lemonster, Massachusetts. And I was a volunteer for the Pop Warner organization. And at the time, back in 1999 and 2000, I had volunteered to help them with a website. Well, actually, I was more voluntold, right? That's kind of what happens when you have an idea in a nonprofit organization. You're kind of forced to execute the idea. And so I walked into my full-time job the next day, and I was telling a coworker, Allison Marshall, that we had to do a website. And she said, oh, it's a nonprofit. I said, yeah. And she said, well, I'll do it for you. I said, oh, great. So she did the website and I delivered it to the nonprofit organization. I effectively had just outsourced my first project. And so at the time, I didn't know really where this was gonna go, but I had a parent walk onto the football field and if you know what that's like in youth sports and how crazy those things can be from time to time, this parent, Erica Milano, walked up and she said, you know, you should, you should start a web company. And I looked at Erica Milano and I said, you should get off the field. Parents aren't allowed on the field. Actually, I said to her, what do I know about that? And she said, well, you did our website. And I said, oh. You think I did the website. Okay, cool. So next thing you know, I have a website company. And my first sale was to a competing nonprofit Pop Warner organization. I charged them 500 bucks to do a website and I outsourced that one too. And so next thing you know, I had a part-time web agency. But that part-time agency in 2002 grew to a full-time agency with eight staff members in 2005. And from there, I was on the top of the mountain. I was coaching youth football, the, the little kids, five and six years old. I was teaching them how to play the sport. I was running a, a, a company, a web agency, and I really loved what I did. I, I couldn't, I could not be beat. You know, at the time, as a head coach of these five and six year olds, look, they couldn't pass the ball. They, they could barely hand off the ball. They didn't really know the name of the plays. They, they didn't really know the rules of the game. They just loved putting a helmet on. 
In fact, they loved so much coming to the field that it mattered so greatly to them. And at the time, I was, I was the head coach. I felt empowered. I felt powerful. I felt like the champion of the world. I felt like this guy. <laughs> but in reality, I was much more like this guy. <laughs> you see, I was an agency owner, and I had no idea how to make a sale for a website. I wasn't Bill Belichick. I was, I need a check. And what I also knew was that I hated sales. I hated every single bit of the sales philosophy. And so I wanted to figure out how to get more referrals in the business. And when I speak in person with people, the first question I'll ask a room full of 100 people is how many people here get all their new business from referrals? And everybody raises their hand. And then I said, now leave your hand up if you spend all your marketing dollars going after referrals and everybody puts their hands down. Because we don't. We spend all our marketing and advertising dollars going after new cold prospects. But instead, we could be building relationships with people. You see, what John Cronin did with John's Crazy Socks, by putting candy in a box and a handwritten card in a box, is not new. That, that's been around for hundreds of years, right? This idea that we care about people. John Cronin didn't have a revolutionary idea. What John Cronin had was revolutionary action. And today I'm going to share with you the four pillars that I talk about in my book, More Word of Mouth Referrals, Lifelong Customers and Radiant Fans. There are four key pillars I'm going to share with you today. I share you a couple stories about some business owners and, and even myself and how we execute on these pillars to make an impact for other people. The first pillar is over-delivery. And I define this as exceeding your client's expectations. Now, you need to know what your clients are. In a dealership world, that's really just having conversations when people walk in the door. What's the expectation on, you know, a custom cargo trailer? How long will it take? What's the communication? Who, you know, do people want to receive communication via text or phone call or email? But having an understanding. Let me be very clear that this is not under promise and over deliver. I hear that a lot. We never want to under promise to people. We want to give them our all, our absolute best every time we can. But we need to exceed the expectations. And so in order to exceed the expectations, we need to know what those expectations are. When we exceed expectations, we make others feel like they matter. And that is the most important thing with getting more referrals in your business. Maya Angelou once said that people will forget what you said and people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Right, when you care about others, when you over deliver, when you find ways to exceed expectations, you make people feel great. This is my friend, Majid Magaraban. He's a, a speaking trainer uh, up in Toronto. I met Majid at a conference we were both attending in Toronto, Canada. And what Majid's business practice is, and this is pre-COVID, is what he does is he, he has his clients fly into Toronto and they arrive a day early. And then the day of his retreat that he does, a three-day retreat, he says oh, he'll pick them up at the hotel. And what most trainers and retreat uh, organizers would do is they would send your traditional uber car but in fact that's not at all what majid does he sends a stretch limo now how many of you at your dealership would send a stretch limo to pick up your customers to come down to the dealership now you might be thinking really dude like that's crazy that's not in the budget. I don't have the money for that. I don't have the space in my garage for a limo. I get it. That's not what this is about. What this is about, though, is figuring it out how you can do this just one more better. Just a little bit better than what you're already doing it now. 
How can you think outside the box so that you deliver an experience that matters to other people and makes them remember you consistently? Some of you may be familiar with the Big Ten Network. I was not for a long time. In 2015, I bought a vacation rental in Fort Myers, Florida, just outside Sanibel Island. And this was July of 2015. I renovated the property and my very first guest booked for March of 2016. My guest's name was Jed. Jed was from Michigan and he was a huge Michigan Wolverines fan. He loved Michigan football and Michigan basketball. And about two weeks prior to flying down to the property, Jed calls me up and he says, hey, Matt, I'm getting ready for my trip. Just wanted to check. Do you have the Big Ten Network? My answer was, uh, I don't know. So I called at Comcast and I said, do I have the Big Ten Network? And they said, no. And I said, can I get it? And they said, yes. I said, how much? They said $10 for the month. I said, okay, great. Hung up and I figured I'd call them back when I made a decision. Now, it's at this point that I'm at a crossroads. What do I do? What would you do? There's a lot of options here, right? There's the first option, which is to call Jen and say, hey, it's 10 bucks, just pay pound me the $10, you're good to go. The second option is, hey, it's 10 bucks, give me the $10, pay it to me. And oh, by the way, there's a sports bar down the street called Gator Bites less than a mile away. It happens to be where all the people from Michigan gather for sports events. So when the football season's on, all the Detroit Lions fans are there. And when basketball's on, all the Wolverine fans are there. So you could go down there and meet a bunch of other Michigan fans. That would be a kind of a cool experience. And then I thought, but how can I just do this one more better? And so I called up my friend in Massachusetts, Marie, who I saw on Facebook was doing wood etching designs on cutting boards. And I said, Marie, can you, can you make me the Michigan Wolverine basketball court emblazoned with the three-point arcs and the Michigan logo right square center of the cutting board, the big blue M? Can you get the, can you get the, free throw lines in there with the little hash marks where the people stand. Can you make this look like a basketball court? And she said, you betcha. And so I ordered it and then I shipped it down to Jed. And I knew that Jed received it, not because the postal service and their delivery notifications, but because Jed went on social media and posted everything about it. Here's a photo of the cutting board I had made for Jed for less than $40. What types of things are you doing that are about your clients? How are you going one step above? I had another cutting board made for me so that I can carry it around this country when I'm on stage and even show it in virtual presentations like this. It's the exact replica of what I sent Jed. There's the M right in the middle. This costs hardly any money. Right? You couldn't even buy this on Amazon. In fact, I don't even think Jed would ever use this to cut anything. He's probably going to put a nail on the wall and hang it up. But it's not about the utility of what he does with it. It's about the relationship we create with the people in our lives, both the customers, the clients, and our referral sources and partners. How can we find a way to do it one more better? That's the mantra. How can we just ratchet it up just a little bit? Remember that good enough isn't good enough. Everybody out there says their customer service is the best. Really? Is it really the best? Who's the determining factor of that? It's not the business owner. It's not the dealership owner. It's not the dealership salesperson. It's the customer. And how are we actually going above and beyond? Like, if we hire a painter to come into our house and paint the walls in our house, and it's a three-day project, but on day two, you come in and you see that the light switches are taped off. 
Well, now that's a problem because two questions pop into my head when I see this. The first is, you've got to be kidding me. You're not taking the light switch cover plates off. The second question that pops into my head was, I had to tell you to do this? Clearly, they did not read this book. This is a real book. Someone wrote this book about painting. What painters need to do is take all the cover light plate switches off, paint the room, and when they go to put them back on, realize immediately that the worst thing on the wall is not the cover plates. Just buy extra cover plates. Tell all your painting friends to do this. Replace all the cover plates. And then bring the stack of cover plates to the customer and say, here's all the cover plates. These are extras. These are backups. We threw the cracked ones away, the stained ones away. Here's some backups for you. Oh, by the way, no charge. Because what do those cost? 30, 40, 50 cents a piece when they buy them in bulk? But the reality is, is we're seeing not enough of that. We're seeing people that just think, oh, well, that's good enough. And we have to remember that good enough is not at all good enough. So that's pillar number one, is exceeding our clients' expectations. Pillar number two in the book is listening. How can we speak less and care more? Speak less and care more. We listen with more than just our ears. We listen also with our eyes. This is my good friend, Ronnie Bartles. She hails from Charleston, South Carolina. And Ronnie is a fantastic marketer as a whole. And she's a great blogger, great social media influencer. And Ronnie would write these great articles about marketing and she would tell great stories. And in one article, it was all about the difference between how sweet and salty can sometimes go together. And buried in the middle of that article was her statement professing her love for chocolate-covered bacon. Now, Ronnie, in and of herself, had never bought a single thing from me. She had referred some clients to me at my agency. But I immediately saw this and started sourcing chocolate-covered bacon, and then I shipped it to her house in Charleston, South Carolina. How can you learn about other people and listen to what they're saying without actually hearing them speak the words? Maybe you're reading an article, you're reading a book, you're reading social media posts. Social media posts are a great place to build relationships with your referral sources, the people that refer you business, the, the, the truck dealerships and the, the people that sell accessories for trucks that you might not sell and the detailing services and people like that that can send you more business. Start to build relationships with them on social media. Start to listen and understand who these people are. I mentioned earlier that I grew up in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And in Hershey, Pennsylvania, there's a very large school a campus. It's called the Milton Hershey School. You see Milton Hershey and his wife could not, Kitty could not have children. In fact, um, they were in Europe many years before he founded the chocolate company and uh, they had a ticket on the Titanic and never got on it. Interestingly enough, in 1909, because they couldn't have kids, they took their entire fortune and put it into a thing called the Deed of Trust to build this school and run this school called the Milton Hershey School. It's for disadvantaged and poverty-stricken kids. Over 1,200 kids attend that school completely tuition-free. They pay nothing to go there. They cover room, um, board, shelter, anything they need. They even cover up to $90,000 in college education once they graduate from this school. Just across from the entrance to Hershey Park is another one of the school buildings. Currently, it's the middle school. It used to be the high school. And that Welcome to Hershey is emblazoned on the hill just right across from the entrance of Hershey Park. You see, I know a lot about this school because I'm a graduate of the Milton Hershey School. In fact, I'm the youngest of three boys, the first to graduate high school and the only one not to go to prison. That school changed my life. And to this day, I wear my high school class ring 
on my right ring finger to remind me of the power that that school had in changing lives. And a lot of people I know personally, both through business and professionally in the areas of where I live and, and frequent, they kind of know the story. They might know the story because they connect with me on social media. And one of those people is Tamson Webster. Tamson is the uh, curator and the, the MC and the di executive director of TEDx Cambridge. And she's run a TEDx event for many years. And I attended one of her workshops and I referred the workshop to another speaker friend who also attended. And about two weeks after we attended the workshop, I received a handwritten thank you card in the mail from Tamson. But included in that handwritten card were nine postcards of Hershey, Pennsylvania. Now, I have no idea where Tamson got those postcards. Could have been eBay, could have been Amazon. I have no idea, and I don't care. What mattered to me was that she understood who I was. And because of that small act of caring about me, I now tell that story on every stage that I'm ever on because it mattered to me in my soul. And the relationship is now closer than it was before. And I'm more likely to refer people to her. She didn't do it though, because she wanted referrals. She did it because she cared about me. She understood who I was. And that's what I propose that you do is you listen to other people and understand who they are. One question I'm often asked whenever I speak around this country is should we mix business and pleasure? Should we have our business colleagues and contacts be our friends on Facebook? And the answer is yes. After all, isn't business personal? You wanna be able to see people's posts on Facebook and what they do. You might want, not wanna see their political rants if they're especially on the opposite side of the fence as you, but you do wanna understand who they are, what goes on in their lives, what their hobbies are, who their family is. I did just that with a client of mine at the web agency. His name was Matt Landry. He runs Forever Green Landscaping in Lemister, Massachusetts. And his dog, Jack, is this beautiful dog here. And Jack would ride in the passenger seat of his landscaping truck, Matt's landscaping truck, every single day of the year. He'd even ride in that truck when Matt was plowing snow in the winter months. And you know the bond between a dog and their owner. It's strong. Some of you might have dogs that come to work with you, just like Matt did. Well, one day I was scrolling social media and I saw a post by Matt's wife, Carrie, that tagged Matt about the passing of Jack. It was very sad. And it told the great story of how he's such a good boy and he was always in that landscaping truck and always on the job site. And how their customers always loved him and how he was a faithful, friend and companion for many, many years. And I took that opportunity to want to wish Matt the best in this tough time. And so I ordered Matt a memory stone for their new garden. And I had it personalized with Jack's name on it. And I sent it to him. I had this stone shipped to me first and then I wrote a handwritten card and sent it to Matt. And certainly Matt did what you would expect as he put pictures up on Facebook. And he then said, this is the kind of vendor I want in my business, the one that cares about me. You know, we don't send things to people so that they post them on social. We're not friends with people so that we see that they post about us on social. We send things to people because we care about them. We trust them. You see, I believe that people do business with not just who they know, like, and trust, but also who they know, like, trust, they care about. And that's why it's powerful, absolutely powerful, to build the skill of listening and to speak less and care more. The third pillar is surprise. And you've seen some of those in action already, both with the limo with Majid and the stone with Jack and a few other things. But... I define surprise as an unexpected gift at an unexpected time. And it doesn't have to be a costly gift. It could be a simple text message. That's a gift. But let me tell you about my friend, Scott McKenzie. 
Scott McKenzie and I both had podcasts at the same time. Uh, many years ago, I ran a podcast for two years called the Square Peg Round Hole Podcast for small business owners. It's still up and live. You can check it out at sprhpodcast.com. And it was all about helping small business owners take action. And Scott came on as a guest, and then I went on his podcast as a guest. He runs the Industrial Talk Podcast. Funny thing, though, when Scott came on as a guest, and I did this for every single guest that came on, I wrote them a handwritten card. And then I followed up the check-in three, four months later, which is something that I traditionally do. And Scott gets on the Zoom call with me and he says, oh, oh, man, hold on one second. He goes off screen. He comes back on, puts his headphones on, and then he holds it up. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. He held up my card from four months earlier. People will keep your handwritten cards. It's about the message you send to them that you took the time to write a note to them. It matters. Look at the grin on his face. People keep your cards. In fact, you probably keep other people's cards. Just in my desk right here, I've got an entire plethora of cards that I've kept. This matters. People will keep your cards. It's a powerful thing when you go from the inbox to the mailbox to stand out, to cut through the noise. That's the goal here. And you need to be intentional about it. Have a purpose. The purpose can be thanks for showing up in the world and being a small business owner. It doesn't have to be something incredibly specific. But there are ways that you can find ways to send things in the mail to surprise people. I talked about that podcast. Well, episode four was with Shannon the Cannon Hudson. Shannon owns the fitness franchise called Nine Round, which is like curves for women, but it's a boxing franchise. And he came on to talk about going from zero to 100. And at the time, we were recording the podcast on Skype. And so we couldn't, we weren't using the video, just the audio feature. So he couldn't hear me or see me, but he could hear me along with my co-host, Dan Candell. And Shannon was talking a lot about fitness because that's the business he was in. And he was saying fitness and fitness. And, fit and finally I said, Shannon, look, you can't see me, but I'm not a specimen of fitness. Fitness doesn't really fit my vocabulary. Well, actually it does. I'm fitness whole pizza in my mouth. We had a really good laugh at that. And then when the podcast episode came out, I called Domino's Pizza in Greenville, South Carolina, and I ordered a pizza delivered to Shannon's office and had them right inside. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Hope you fitness pizza in your mouth. I surprised him with a pizza delivery. It's fantastic. We had a great time. Did Shannon ever refer me? No, that's not what it's about. It's about building better relationships with other people making an impact and making other people feel like they matter. That is what surprise does. It's an unexpected gift and an unexpected time and it makes people smile. That's what we're going for here when we're trying to get more word of mouth referrals in our business and in our dealership. The fourth pillar is non-self-serving acts. That's doing for others for their benefit and no value or benefit to you. Now, I don't know where many of you are located in the United States. As I mentioned, I split time between Boston and Florida. So naturally, I'm a New England Patriots fan. Don't hate me for that, <laughs> but I am. And so one of my big bucket list items was to attend a Super Bowl. And so I wanted to do it before Brady retired. And so in 2019, I went with my friend Roger to Minneapolis to attend the Super Bowl. It was a huge bucket list item for me. And throughout that day, I had a few friends who were texting me. Matt Landry was one of them. Another one was Kelton Kelly, a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And they were saying to me, hey, don't skimp on the photos. We wish we were there with you. We're happy for you. Enjoy the day. Simple, basic text messages and Facebook messages that they were sending to me. 
And I wish that they could have been there with Roger and I. We had a great time. Yeah, I know. They lost that year. The Eagles won. We won't talk too much about that. Bottom line, I had a great time. It was a huge bucket list for me. I checked it off. And as I'm leaving the stadium that day, a bit slightly dejected because Gronk missed the Hail Mary pass just short of the end zone. I see these carts along the catwalks as we're walking to the post-game event with the Patriots organization. And the carts have memorabilia on them. They have these pins, these Super Bowl 52 pens or whatever it was, you know, L-I-I or 53, whatever it was with the trophy on it. And I decided to stop and get a couple pins. I think I got four or five. And then when I got back the next day from the trip, I sat down and I wrote some handwritten cards to everyone that texted or messaged me that day and said, I wish you were there. Thank you for your support in my big bucket list item. And I sent them a Super Bowl pin in a handwritten card. They cared enough about me. I decided I wanted to care about them. I learned these tactics by reading this book, Never Eat Alone, by Keith Ferrazzi. And you might look at me and say, Matt has never eaten alone. I get it. <laughs> that's, there's a part of the book that's about sharing meals with other people. So you might as well build relationships while sharing meals. But really what I took out of this, what I took out of this was that I want to, you know, to give without the expectation of getting anything in return. That's the key. So much so that I keep copies of this book on my bookshelf here so that I can mail them as gifts to people that perk up with interest about the book when I mention it. This book taught me how to deepen my relationships with others. And that's what I need and want you to do with your dealership is to deepen your relationships. Remember that it's not just about the clients. Most people I work with think that referrals come from their clients. In fact, clients refer one to three people over a lifetime. But referral sources, centers of influence, people in a position to refer, refer one to three times a year. Are you building deeper relationships with truck mechanics, mobile mechanics, ATV dealerships, lawnmower companies, landscaping organizations and associations, anybody that is serving the same audience as you, but not buying from you. They service the same customer that you service. Are you working in the racing world? And so therefore you're building relationships with people who build engines or tire manufacturers or tire changing companies, right? Tire sales, uh, locations, any place where someone's going who has a vehicle that pulls a trailer has a commonality with you to some degree. We need to look and build those relationships with others. That's how we get more referrals. And remember that as we do this, we want to do it in a way that's non-self-serving. We, we're interested in others doing for others for their benefit and no value or benefit to you. Don't do it for the referrals. Do it for the relationships. Interestingly enough, what every marketing and advertising agency will tell you to do is you do advertising and marketing so that you can be TOMA, top of mind awareness. It's an industry term that you can consistently be on top of the mind of your prospective buyer when they're ready to buy. That's why you would do marketing or advertising. I would argue that if you built relationships with your ideal referral sources and your clients, that you will be top of mind, that you'll be caring about other people. And the byproduct of caring 
is more word of mouth referrals. One thing we never want to do is ask people for referrals because two answers come up when we ask people the question, do you know someone that needs a trailer? Do you know someone that needs a cargo trailer? Do you know someone that needs our product or our service? The first answer is, well, yeah, I think uh, John Doe down the street does. I know he has a, a thing and he probably needs to upgrade it. That's not a referral, folks. That's a lead. Referrals are people who are ready, willing, and able to buy. And so you're going to get a lead. You're going to chase it. It's not going to convert. You're wasting your time. The second reason we don't ask for referrals is because the other response is, oh, yeah, let me think about that and I'll get back to you. And then they never do. They never get back to you. It's like dead silence, crickets. Furthermore, we don't like to be asked to have access to our Rolodex, to our contact database. We know that we refer based on trust. That when we refer to other people when we know, like, trust and care about them. And so I would ask you a challenging question today. Do you feel like we can care more? In fact, can we care more? I believe that we can. As a society, we can. As a business community, we can. I believe that there's room for improvement all the way. And so I would argue that each person has a blind spot. That we can do better in different parts of our relationship building. And so I've created a self-assessment around caring. How do you interact with other people? You can take that self-assessment at ICanCareMore.com. And when you submit that self-assessment, what's going to happen is you're going to get an automatic email within a few minutes that will tell you your caring score. It gives you a baseline of where to start. The idea is that you understand and are challenged by the questions to think about different areas of your life and your business where you might be able to insert some new procedures, some processes, something in your business that can help you build better relationships with others. It's a powerful way to live. The more you care about other people, what happens is you start writing these cards to people. You start developing a happier place in your own life. And I hear this from a lot of people. You know, as bad as I've been writing more and more cards, I'm finding that I'm a happier person. And I would agree. One thing I wanted to mention is I'm all often asked about how to write a card. Well, my handwriting is horrible. Um, no one cares. No one cares about what your handwriting is like. There are a couple principles in writing a card. The first of which is you need a card, you need a envelope, and you need some stamps. So that's the first thing I would argue that you do is you go to Amazon, you buy some blank cards. Do not buy branded cards. The minute you put your business card or your brand on the card, it makes it about you. This happens to be a card I had custom made. It's a picture of my side-by-side -side ATV from Facebook. It says, slay the day. There's no other branding on this. It's completely blank on the inside. I never send it with a business card. Handwritten cards are the best. You don't also have to make them thank you cards. They can just be straight up blank cards. I just get in the practice of writing one or two cards a week. If you don't know who to write a card to, write someone a card for showing up as a business owner, for running a nonprofit, for being a member of the local chamber or association that you're a member of, perhaps another um, NATDA member that has given you some advice over the years. That's where the power of the card comes in. So the first thing is handwritten. No one cares about the chicken scratch. We can make out what the card read, you know, says when you write it. The second thing is try to reference a callback of recent conversation or something that happened on Facebook or otherwise that you're aware of and that they're aware of. 
that builds the relationship a little bit closer. Write a card because you want to write a card because you want to care about this person. That's the power of building relationships with other people. Now, some of you may or may not golf. I don't know, but I, I want to share with you what golfing meant to me. You know, golfing, I'm horrible at it, probably like most of you. I always tell people I'm like, a, I shoot like 81 or 82, and that's on nine holes. <laughs> I'm pretty bad. But one, one day I was uh, entered into the chamber golf tournament with a foursome, and I had a person back out at the last minute. And so I called my friend David, who is a real estate attorney. He was a client at the time, but had become a good friend. And I called him and I said, do you want to golf tomorrow? I had a back out for the chamber. And he said, yes. And so he showed up and he lines up on the first tee that day at the chamber golf tournament. He does that thing where he does the little waggle. I don't know why anybody does that, by the way. And he swings and he completely misses the ball. And I thought to myself, oh boy, I called an attorney. I thought he was going to be a ringer. He's nothing like what I thought he was going to be. He's worse than me. As if that could even happen. So I said, David, don't worry. We have all day. Just line up and hit it again. And this time he lines up, he swings and connects. Ding! And it is going, going. And then takes a hard, sharp right, like it put a turn signal on. Into the woods it went. By the third hole, David looks at me in the golf cart and says, by the way, Matt, I hate golf. To which I said, well, then why are you here? And he replied with a statement that changed my life forever. He said, because you asked. That showed me the power of relationships, that he hated golf so much, but was willing to show up because of the relationship that we had. And, you know, we didn't talk about business all day. By the 10th hole, in fact, David was done, feet up on the front dash of the golf cart, drinking beer after beer after beer from the beer cart. Some of you might know what that is. It's a long day of golf. So we get to the 18th fairway, the last hole we're playing on the uh, Chamber Golf Tournament. And David turns to me and says, oh, by the way, give me a call tomorrow. I want to talk about a project. That's the first time all day the word business and project had even come up. And so I call him the next day, and he buys a $10,000 website for me, one of my top-end products. And two weeks later, he referred another real estate attorney to buy another website, and they bought a $10,000 website. Now, I'm not standing here in my converted dining room slash virtual studio due to a pandemic to tell you that playing golf is going to produce $20,000 in business revenue for you. But I do believe that building relationships matters to the point where people will show up for you even when they hate the thing you're doing. Because the relationship supersedes anything else. I believe in it so much that I call it the high five effect. That's the new book I've got coming out this year. The high five effect, how to do business with people that bring us joy. I get that in a pandemic, we're not going to be physically high fiving people, but this is a figurative thing. Who can we surround ourselves with that actually make us happy, that make us joyful in our business, that we don't do business with people that don't pay us on time or that are difficult to work with, but instead make us smile in our business every single day? That is the power of word of mouth referrals and the power of caring about other people that we can do a high five, even possibly in the future, a physical high five, in any hallway that we walk down, in any dealership we land in, at any in-person conference that we ever go again to for NATDA, that we are literally high-fiving people because they make us happy and they bring us joy. And at the end result of all of that is that we get more referrals in our business. 
hope that I've given you some insight today to think about the types of things that you can change in your dealership, who you can build relationships with, who is it in your community that is referring you on a regular basis. Take a look at the last 10 referral sources that have sent you new business. Now start doubling down on those relationships. Look at that list of 10 people and say, who do I like on this list? Who do I want to spend more time with? Who makes me happy? Who's funny? Who do I like to be around? And start doing the figurative high five with those people. As I like to say on every speech I ever give, on every YouTube video I put up every single week on the internet, until next time, don't forget to live happy, smile a lot, and high five everyone around you. Thanks. I hope you have a great day.